today is just a quick update video to talk about the X-T1 and a few other things I've been working on. So if you watch my channel the last couple of months, you know that I bought an X-T1 this summer and have been using it extensively since I bought it. Uh, I really, really enjoy using this camera. And over the past six weeks or so, I've started to experiment with my own film simulation recipes uh, to give my own custom looks. And I've started to share those on this channel as well as on my blog. So this week I have around three to four new recipes being posted. Three of them are black and white. One of them is color. Uh, I don't know for sure if I'll make specific straight out of the camera videos for those yet or not. So just in case, I'm going to give you a notice here, letting you know that they will be coming this week to keep an eye on the blog and uh, check those out. As, right, as of right now, I have about uh, 10 X-T1 specific recipes on there and one that I made specifically for the X-H1 that will obviously work in other cameras as well. So besides posting those recipes here in my Straight Outta Camera series and on my blog, my blog is where most of them will land. I don't always make a video for each recipe. So if you've watched the videos here but haven't visited the blog yet, I invite you to do so. You'll find even more recipes that you haven't seen here. The other place I share these at is on Facebook groups. I have two groups that I created. Uh, one is for X-T1 owners specifically, and the other is a general Fujifilm uh, group, a Fujifilm creative group. I have those links on my blog, but I'll also try to put them in the description. So if you haven't joined yet and you're interested in connecting with other Fujifilm users, with, with other X-T1 users, then definitely check out those Facebook groups. Something else regarding Facebook groups, I'm open to other suggestions on where to host these groups types of groups at. Uh, Facebook just has one of the most convenient uh, tools to create groups like this and obviously it has a lot of users. But if there's some other alternative that you guys use that that you might want to share with me that um, then please do so so I can uh, experiment and build some other options for some of these groups that that would revolve around the Fujifilm gear. Real quick I want to talk about uh, editing software. Uh, this is like an ongoing subject on some of these Facebook groups, the, on the groups that I created, but also on the other groups that I have joined. Um, people asking what's the best, what's the best uh, software to edit Fujifilm files with, what does everyone use. To be honest, it doesn't seem like there's any consensus. Uh, some people still have issue with Lightroom sharpening, uh, the Lightroom sharpening of these Fujifilm files. Some people don't. Uh, so you're going to find a mix of answers. I just bought a new iMac and since whenever I buy a new computer I do fresh installs of everything. Although I did install my Creative Cloud subscription on the computer, I've decided to try to use Capture One in conjunction with Affinity Photo as my main photo tools for my uh, photography right now. So that will be an interesting experiment for me because I'm not as familiar with Capture One as I am with Lightroom. Um, but I will keep you updated as I learn it, maybe make some videos on that journey as well. But I really love Affinity Photo. I think those are ama amazing products. For the most part, those two tools together should pretty much replace Lightroom and Photoshop for my specific use case. The one question mark I have with that workflow is my printing aspect of all that. So I'll keep you updated on that. I'm still figuring those details out. So like I said, um, I have around 10 recipes on my blog for the X-T1 and by the end of the week or by the early next week I'll have around 14, maybe one or two more than that. So I'm going to switch gears I think and start spending more time using the X-H1 for stills and building my recipe library for that. Um, obviously anything on the X-T1 you can use in the X-H1 and build upon it, uh, but I still, I still want to see what I can create specifically for the X-H1 and that, and that sensor that's in that camera, which is uh, pretty much the same as the X-T2. So if you have uh, recommendations for looks or things you want me to recreate, uh, please, I'm open to suggestions, please let me know. 
Otherwise, just keep an eye out on this channel and on my blog as I start posting some of those XH1 recipes. So really, that's it. Um, again, I say this all the time, but I, I, I genuinely appreciate all the new subscribers I have and all the subscribers who stick with me, even though my channel has shifted a little bit, not quite as film heavy as it was. Although I do truly intend to get back to doing more film photography videos um, in the future. I've just been really, really enjoying using the X-T1. So a lot of my inner photography energy has been built, has been uh, geared towards this camera and the, the images I'm creating with that. Um, so I appreciate all the subscribers. So if, you've, if you watch these videos and you aren't subscribing, I please invite you to do so. Uh, let me know what content you're looking for or what you like to see or what you've liked about the channel so far. Please check the blog out for recipes. Consider those Facebook groups if you're on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, let me know what alternatives you might have in mind for creative groups like that. So that's it for now. I hope everyone is doing well and I'll talk to you soon.